In this section of the course, we're going to take a look at the rest of the devices in the Reason Rack, and we're going to start by looking at the Matrix, a really interesting device. But first, let me show you this line mixer. This is a mixer just like the 14.2 mixer, except it only has six channels and limited effects. So it's a nice little mixer, great for submixes in your rack. So I'm going to add a subtractor, and we'll pick a sound. How about a bass sound here? Perfect. And now let's add a matrix. And you have to scroll all the way down to the bottom to find the matrix. There we are. Now the matrix is a sequencer. It doesn't make any sound by itself. You have to hook it to something else. It has up to 32 different steps, which you control over here. And it has 32 patterns, four banks, A through D, of eight patterns. And just like the Redrum or the Dr. Octorex, you can switch among these patterns from your sequencer or just by clicking on them. And just like the Redrum and Dr. Octorex, you have a context-sensitive menu that lets you do various things to patterns, cut, copying, shifting, and so forth. Now, the matrix sends three types of information, note CV, gate CV, and curve CV. Note CV is usually used for pitch information. We just draw in pitches just by clicking on a block. And again, it won't do anything until we hook it to an instrument or some device. And of course, I can drag across, so forth. Now, down below the pitches or the note CV is the gate CV. And this is where we send note on and off information as well as velocity. So if there is a bar here, it means we're sending a note. And depending on the height of the bar, that will determine velocity. We'll talk about the curve CV in a moment. Now notice over here the octave switch. This allows me to put in pitches over a range of five octaves. So we're working the third octave here, but if I switch up here, I can put some things up high in the fourth octave and then down in the second octave. Now we can start the patterns with our sequencer or just by pushing the run button here. and you can hear it played back our subtractor. Well, we didn't do anything. The matrix was auto-routed to the subtractor when we added it. The gate CV went to the gate input, and the note CV went to the CV input of the subtractor. Both of these need to be wired up. Otherwise, we won't send both parts of the MIDI information, the note as well as the note on and velocity. Over on the right-hand side of the matrix, I have a resolution knob, which allows me to determine the speed of the sequencer. And of course, it's synced to tempo. I can also have ties in my sequence. And the way I do that is either by clicking on the tie button, and you'll notice the double wide bars there, that means a tie, or we can just hold down the shift key and drag across the gate area. Now the switch at the top lets me toggle between the note CV or keys, and the curve CV. And the curve CV is usually used to control some other parameter. I can drag in a curve and wire it to some parameter of an instrument. So let's drag that in now. And we'll take the curve CV and wire it to the filter frequency of my subtractor. Now this knob determines how much influence my input will have over the filter frequency. If I have it set all the way to zero, then the matrix won't influence filter frequency at all. So we'll set it to about here, so it's quite a bit of influence. And let's listen to our sequence. Mm -hmm. 
So you can hear how the curve CV influenced the filter. So three parts to the matrix, the note CV, the gate CV, which controls note on and velocity, and then finally the curve CV, which can be wired to any parameter that takes CV information. There's an awful lot you can do with the matrix, much more than I showed you here, just by wiring up note, gate, and curve in different ways.